Good morning, everybody. Happy Devotion Tuesday. Good to be with you today. Looking to spending a little time with you. I want to talk about something familiar to um, Christians. <clears throat> and if it's not familiar to you, um, then I would like to make it more familiar to you because it offers such great hope to us this morning. I'm reading from Matthew chapter 26, verses 26 to 28. <clears throat> and as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. For the remission of sins, many translations say, for the forgiveness of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And so I want to talk and share a little bit this morning about some perspective on the Lord's Supper. Church of Modern Day knows it as Communion. And I want to talk to it talk to it as a meal of remembrance. A meal of remembrance. Its key really is memory and execution. Now, when you think about food, um, it often evokes memories, special occasions, feelings. Uh, meals can bring back memories. Uh, that is the case in the Lord's Supper. Jesus gives a meal to the disciples to evoke memories, to remember what he is about to do for us. Do you remember Jesus's last night with his disciples? He shared one last meal. It was called the Passover meal. And he chose to, to do that with his closest friends before he was betrayed, before he would be beaten, before he would be crucified. In these final moments, Jesus gave them a meal to remember him by as they celebrated God's rescue of his chosen people in the Passover. <clears throat> I think a brief history will help us this morning. We need to go back to the Passover, um, all the way back to Genesis. God promises to bless Abraham and his family and all the nations through them in Genesis chapter 12 and in 17. Yet Exodus begins with this family, this, this people of Israel living under backbreaking slavery to Egypt. The nation cries out to God, and, and God hears their cry. They've been in slavery for over 400 years. Now, to free them, God sends nine plagues to show that he was the one true God, that there were no other gods. He was all-powerful. And then after those nine plagues, he sent the tenth plague. It was the climatic judgment It was the climatic act of judgment for Egypt and Pharaoh. And this is called the Passover. There were seven feasts. The Feast of no, well, let me think about that now. Uh, seven feasts. The Feast of Passover, Unleavened Bread, First Fruits. Um, Feast of Weeks, or Pentecost, the Feast of Trumpets, the Feast of Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Boots. And we're talking about Passover this morning. Uh, in this particular feast, though, the, the event was that God himself would go out through Egypt and kill every firstborn. 
um, that was not keeping the Passover. But he would protect the firstborn of all the Israelites if each household would sacrifice a lamb, sprinkle its blood on the top of the door and on the sides of the door. Um, and then they were to they were they were to eat a meal that would culminate with a meal that they would eat with this lamb and with bitter herbs and unleavened bread. It would be a meal that would be remembered for years to come as the Passover. And as we noticed, right, in the reading of the Passover story with Jesus, that had been remembered for the last 1,500 years. So every year they celebrated the Passover, and they still do today. The Passover became an annual event for the, for the Israelites. It was marked by this meal this preparation, this execution, God himself instituted to remind Israel that he had spared them. Not because they were without sin, not because they were good, not because they were living for him, but because he's merciful. And there would be a substitution, this, this slaying of the lamb and then the application of the applying the blood of the lamb and then this meal. Every year, generation after gener generation, the people of Israel remembered God's act of salvation and how he had brought them out of Egypt with a great show of power. But it was always started with this meal. Every year, Israel was reminded that they, that a lamb was sacrificed for their freedom. They were spared because of the killing of a lamb, because of the shedding and application of that lamb's blood, the, the, the preparations for the day and, and the special meal. Only they shared. Only they shared. See, Israel celebrated the Passover as a nation, but family by family. And Israel would do this as a shared story, a shared experience, and a shared history. Now, let's go back to the Passover night with Jesus and his disciples as they celebrated the Passover one last time, at least with the Messiah, in commemorating God's act of salvation in the past, Jesus was now in their present, giving the disciples a new meal to remember. And we read, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup and he gave thanks and he gave it to them saying, drink from all of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new, test, new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I will say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now until the day when I drank it new with my father's kingdom. So there was an old covenant, the Old Testament. And under the old covenant in Old Testament, we had the seven feasts and the Beginning of that was Passover. Passover. And Jesus tells them now at this feast, he's giving them a new covenant or a new agreement. And that is again beginning with this meal. It will again have a lamb that is sacrificed and blood that gets shed and, and a meal that is shared. After that meal, the next day, Jesus would die on a cross as a substitute for humanity, bearing God's wrath against all sinners and against all sin. God then raised Jesus from the dead in glory, and now he reigns in heaven, offering forgiveness and eternal life to everyone who will trust in him. If you're hearing this this morning for the very first time, 
um, and you haven't yet come to Jesus, then, then I offer you to think about this. I offer you to uh, apply this because it's still available for you this morning. A relationship with Jesus, this relationship with God, this rescuing, this forgiveness of, of sins. And then your life, too, will be transformed as so many tens of millions of people have been forever. But just like the Passover meal recalled God's rescue of Israel, the Lord's Supper reminds us of how Jesus came to rescue us. And yet this meal commemorates a far greater salvation. The rescue from Egypt and the Passover were a preview of a greater salvation through the death of Christ the burial, the resurrection, the lamb, God would rescue humanity, not just from Egypt, but from all sin. Paul reminds the church at Corinth in 1 Corinthians 11 about the Lord's Supper. And he says, for I receive from the Lord. Did you catch that? I receive from the Lord. That which I also deliver to you, that, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he took the cup. And after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new agreement. In my blood, this do, and as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. We're to remember this meal. We are to apply this meal. We are to share this meal. See, we too, as the church, have a shared experience, a shared story, a shared history. Paul says in verse 26, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Paul also reminds us in this passage of Scripture, in verse 28, that it's important that we examine ourselves before taking this meal. See, this meal is serious business. This, this meal is about remembering. And this meal is, in, uh, is about obeying. And this meal is about experiencing. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and, and drink of the cup. See, this, this need to remember, to be self-aware, to understand the significance of the moment and of the, of the event is, is very, very important. And, and you might think that, that in the communion table, this new Passover meal that we only look back, right? It, it's only a historical look, but, but that would be a mistake. Jesus has uses the Passover meal to point his disciples to a new and greater Passover sacrifice. He was the lamb who took away the sin of the world. The bread representing his body and the wine representing his blood. Jesus is the Passover lamb of the New Testament. He is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And at this supper, it helps us to remember this great act of sacrifice, this great act of love, this great act of redemption, this wonderful act of freeing, this incredible act of salvation. This supper, and Calvary were very real events. And their purpose was to unite us and to free us. As we eat the bread and drink the cup, we remember just as Jesus told us to do, just as Paul reminded us to do, do this in remembrance of me. We look back with thankful hearts to the cross. And yet we, we look forward. Let your heart be filled with thankfulness for the life 
that Jesus purchased for you today through, through his death. As we move forward into the future and um, as new life has their communion service, I, I, I want us to remember that the act of remember, remembering the Lord's Supper is not some mere mental activity. It's a remembering that redefines and shapes who we are today. It cancels our self-centered life stories and places us inside a new and far grander narrative. It's a training exercise in living inside our new identities as new born again Christians. Let our hearts be filled with thanks, thankfulness for the life that Jesus purchased through his death. Communion causes us to look back, but as I said, that looking back causes us to look forward. Communion, we look back at what was done and what was won, but it also causes us to look forward to what is to come. Jesus said that he will one day sit down again with us and celebrate this meal. And remember, 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 the Bible begins with a marriage and it ends with a marriage. The Bible has this story, this wonderful supper, this wonderful meal, but it also ends with a marriage supper of the Lamb in Revelation 19. Praise the Lord. Remember, remember. I'm reminded of an old hymn this morning. What a day that will be when Jesus I shall see. I don't know if you remember it, but the words are grand. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see, and I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by the hand, and he leads me to the promised land. What a day, glorious day, that will be. There'll be no more sorrows, there are no more burdens to bear, no more sickness and no more pain, no more parting over there. But forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day, that will be. Wow. That's the significance of Passover. That's the greater sig significance of Calvary. And Calvary, we celebrate a meal together on the glorious, wonderful acts that Jesus did to set us free, to give us peace, to forgive us, to cleanse us, to wash us, to give us a new hope, a fresh start. Passover was a significant meal and a significant event. The Lord's Supper was a significant meal and a significant event that is still celebrated and shared by millions of Christians today. Well, I hope this little devotion has um, helped us frame this and to think about the, the Lord's Supper. It's about memory that is shared at a table where we share a meal and we, we remember what the Lord has done with us in these symbolic uh, offerings, the bread representing his body, the wine representing his blood, and the realization that he set us free, but he's coming back to take us to that next meal. Praise the Lord. Well, I hope you'll leave some comments today. Uh, I hope this blesses you today. Uh, I hope you reflect on it today. And especially as we move into our, our next uh, supper, communion with the Lord. Um, let's pray. Father, we love you. We appreciate you. Ask you to be with us today. Ask you to touch lives. Ask you to change lives. Ask you, Lord, that as hands reach up, you reach down. Make a difference in someone's life this week. 
We pray it, we ask it in the name which is above every name, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen. Share this with someone. Um, oh, there's such wonderful hope this morning. Have a great rest of the week, and may God richly bless you. Amen.